So looking here, we'll start with one oscillator. I'll mute this filter. And we're gonna start by detuning it quite a bit. With the 11 oscillator voice mode. Add another oscillator. You can see this is blank for now. Set it to quad. Detune it in the other direction and then put it in an octave up. Just checking the width there. Uh, looking at envelope one, we'll set the sustain all the way up, increase the release. Now looking in the lower left, there's a tap called global, and I'll go over more of this stuff later, but there's a very simple control here called voice mode, which basically controls the polyphony of the synth. So by default, it's on poly, which means you can play I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but you can play you know, as many notes as you want uh, limited by voices below it. So if you have few, you're going to get just a handful. If you have many, you can pretty much play anything you want. But of course, the more voices you have, the more CPU gets used. Now if you set it to re-trigger, you get one voice at a time. However, what re-trigger means is that every time you play a note, the envelopes start over again. So for example, so that has an attack on every note. So that's me playing legato on the keyboard, but you can hear every time I switch to a new note, that attack is re-triggered. On the other hand, if you switch to legato, that actually keeps the envelope that you had uh, triggered before as long as you're actually playing legato. So that tends to be very useful for expressive instruments as well as uh, lead sounds to some extent. And then we'll get to these other modes later, but uh, what I wanted to do is use the re-trigger mode. And I'd also like to go to glide here, and that kind of uh, has a little pitch bend in between notes. You, you can hear it probably a little bit, it's pretty subtle. So now let's uh, grab a filter here. I'm gonna go down to BR notch, band reject, and just check out the sound. So that probably sounds, you know, kind of familiar. Why don't we modulate that with uh, LFO1, which is at the bottom. I just noticed actually some of this stuff is going off the screen, these menus, so I apologize for that. I have limited recording space. Actually, sorry, I should set this to LFO2. I'll set this to a triangle wave instead of a sine, just by clicking on the waveform. It's pretty straightforward. So that's a, you know, it's a pretty nice sound by itself. Um, but what you can do is, let's say I don't want to use two more oscillators, but I want to use this right channel here. There's something called mix. So mix one, mix two, mix three, mix four. If you click on it, it splits the sound in half and it splits it to wherever you put the mix tab. So if I'm here and let's I'll mute channel one by clicking this box, that's the mute button. I'm getting everything from one. These two oscillators you can see are going to mix one. And if I go to the first channel, I get everything that was there too. So now I have two channels. And if I take this off, the volume is pretty much unchanged because once you do that mix, again, it, it cuts the signal in half. The module here enables you to change the panning and the mix between the two, so all the way to the left would be this first channel, all the way to the right would be the second one. Uh, double clicking, as I just did, resets a knob to its default position. What we're gonna do here is set up another filter. So these two oscillators are now going through filter one and filter two, but they're doing that in parallel. If I put it here, it would go through filter one and then filter two. So the processed sound of filter one would be fed directly. In this case, it's not what we want. So again, I'm gonna mute this and I'm gonna set this to a band pass. And I want this sound to be kind of all over the place. So I'm gonna set LFO three, increase the modulation depth. 
So we'll increase the volume of that channel because this is pretty quiet. And now in the modulation matrix, what I'd like to do is set filter 2's cutoff to an envelope. So I'm going to create another envelope here, envelope 2. Sustain all the way down. Now the thing is, with when you're dealing with filter envelopes, uh, you have to make sure that the release is at the same value or greater than the value for your amplitude envelope, otherwise the sound uh, cuts off inappropriately. Which may be what you want, but I want the, the filter to follow the amplitude. Like that. So this is what we have. So you could have a lot of fun with that, you know, doing drum and bass uh, basses. But you can see this patch has actually become, you know, it's getting up there in complexity. And you can see, though, that it's very straightforward. You know, I just started with one oscillator at a time, and then one VCF, the mix, and everything just kind of gets added there. And if I were to, say, mute this stuff and say, oh, I want to start over with that, um, then, again, we're getting back to just the one channel and just the things that I'm actually using on the left. So just as an example, let's say, instead of doing that, we'll keep the mix, set VCF3, so I keep VCF2 settings, and we'll do an AP phaser, all pass. And maybe this time set it to velocity. Again, that could be a pretty useful sound, or, um, you know, you can keep going from here. Let's say, why don't we do both? Set mix two to split it to that channel. And this is going to be very quiet, though. Whoops, wrong one. That's going to be quiet. That's kind of the sound we had before, and then... So there you go, that's a basic uh, drum and bass patch. <laughs>